Thanks, Joe. That's a really great talk. And we've got a lot of questions coming in. So I'll start straight away. Uh, okay. Teresa, first question is from Teresa. As she's asked, um, she's got a hip impingement with severe cartilage damage and mobility is very restricted, high pain intensity. She's only 56. Um, is a total hip replacement a best option? She was offered an injection, but believes this is for short-term pain relief. And she's confused as to why she was offered an, an injection. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Teresa, yeah. Uh, uh, given your age, impingement is uh, is a common enough uh, problem uh, uh, these days, and it can uh, it can lead to uh, arthritis or degeneration of your uh, of your of your hip cartilage. Uh, and really, uh, many patients who impingement patients uh, patients who go on, want to develop arthritis do need a hip replacement. And uh, when you need a hip replacement, really is decided by the severity of your uh, of your symptoms. So when your symptoms are severe to the point where you have constant uh, pain. Uh, where you're, uh, where you can't walk a reasonable distance or do the activities of daily living that you like to do, uh, you know, such as walking, for example, or playing golf, uh, uh, and you're having difficulty sleeping at night, they're the general criteria for proceeding with a uh, with a hip replacement. Uh, often we we try and delay a hip replacement uh, uh, for patients who have lesser symptoms, and a a hip steroid injection is is something that can be useful. And the reason for that is that the uh, the average lifespan of a hip replacement for about sixty percent of patients now is about it's about twenty years. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so so you know other you, you may need a second hip replacement after that, and a steroid injection is used for patients with lesser symptoms uh, uh, as a, as a kind of a you know to try and delay a hip replacement. Uh, but there will come a time, I'm sure, when you yeah you know, when you may well need a uh, you know when you may well need a hip replacement. And if you know if the steroid injection doesn't uh, have much effect or starts to to wear off, then that's generally one of the indicators uh, that it's time for a hip replacement. Thanks, Joe. Um, Barry's another one said um, he was told he needed a hip replacement ten years ago, but he was too young. Um, is hip resurfacing or hip replacement with younger patients? And can minimally minimally invasive hip surgery be performed on any patient? Function normally day to day at work with paracetamol, but he's edging closer to having surgery. Now, I think you probably answered some of that in your your talk as well. But yes, that kind of again, that just kind of uh, feeds on uh, to the previous uh, answer. And really, uh, we we do we do try to avoid, if possible, uh, hip replacements in younger patients uh, due to the the lifespan of of, a, of an average hip replacement. And it, it's it, it's worth worth again pointing out that a revision hip replacement. Uh, 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 is a much more complex procedure for both, you know, for both us and uh, both uh, and for patients in terms of recovery afterwards. And the amount of function you, you, you have after a re revision total hip replacement tends to be less than the original, uh, um, um, you know, your original hip replacement. So I think if you're managing, if you have reasonable level of function and you're managing with paracetamol, uh, again, you know, you, you probably don't hit those uh, triggers or, or criteria that we have. For uh, uh, you know, for proceeding with the hip replacement, uh, and 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 you're probably you know, I'm sure it will come with time, but uh, you know, having hip replacement is like a lot of things. It's, it's about getting the timing right. It's the wrong thing to do to have it too early, and it's also, it's also, uh, uh, you know, it's also a bad thing to have it too late. It's about from a patient's perspective. It's about getting the uh, timing uh, right so that your symptoms uh, haven't progressed you're too severe. You have a reasonable, uh, uh, you know, hip uh, flexibility so that you can, rec you can recover after your, your hip replacement afterwards. But again, as I said, it's important to avoid having it too early. Uh, uh, so that's, you, know, you, you avoid having to have a revision hip replacement uh, um, at all, if, uh, 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 if at all possible. Okay. Thanks. And uh, Jeanette asked a very practical question. Could she still go horse riding after a hip replacement? Uh, yes, that's a great uh, question, uh, uh, and um, so the the uh, I guess the, the the best answer to that is maybe, uh, and it it is there's, there's, there's no reason why you can't go horse riding, uh, and it depends on factors such as what your hip flexibility is like after your hip replacement, and that in turn will depend on your hip flexibility uh, before your hip replacement. So some patients have really stiff uh, hips uh, before surgery due to. Uh, Arthritis, and uh, whilst the hip replacement will, you know, will bring back some flexibility in your, uh, in your, uh, in your hip, 
may not bring back enough flexibility, you know, for uh, uh, for horse riding and for uh, you know for getting on a horse and uh, uh, and using a saddle. Uh, you can certainly, you know, you can certainly use aids uh, uh, to get onto the horse, like a you know, like a stand box. But it's about uh, uh, you know, it's about spreading your uh, your uh, knees really uh, on the saddle is the uh, is a difficult part. It certainly is possible, uh, but you know, it, it depends on what your flexibility and muscle strength. Is uh, is like your uh, is like after your um, after your hip replacement. Yeah. Uh, I would say I have a uh, I've written a, a recent uh, article uh, that you can access on my website for anybody who's uh, asking questions about uh, you know what can you do when after a hip replacement. It, it's my website is jawquilly uh, dot com, and it, on the news section there's an article that goes through you know most sports and when. Uh, 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 when uh, and this is based on a recent paper published in the uh, in the uh, in one of the leading uh, international hip journals, uh, and when it's safe to get back to activities such as golf, cycling, uh, even tennis, running, and uh, and horse riding. For horse riding, it's generally uh, at the six month mark. Uh, if you have enough uh, hip flexibility and range of movement after your uh, after your surgery. Thanks, Joe. Actually, that leads on to Vivian's question, which is how soon could she play golf? After a hip replacement, uh, yeah. Again, so golf, you can get, you can generally get back to golf a little earlier. So generally, uh, I would say at the uh, twelve week uh, mark, some patients can can get back a little earlier than that. And again, it's uh, you know your return to function after hip surgery is yeah, many things influence it, like uh, like you know what your flexibility uh, uh, is like after your hip replacement, uh, which which as I said it will be influenced by your flexibility beforehand, your, your overall uh, muscle strength and coordination, uh, uh, we, we all will decide what type of activities you can uh, you can do afterwards. And again, this feeds into the point I made there about not leaving it too late to get a hip replacement. If you, you know, if, if you wait until symptoms are very severe, which we sometimes see, then it's hard to get a, a good uh, hip flexibility afterwards, even with a hip replacement. That can limit uh, your ability to return to to kind of higher function activities such as, you know, such as uh, such as golf and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and so on. Okay, good. Uh, Mary asks, what which is the most common anaesthetic used for hip replacement, general or epidural, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of both? Uh, so the uh, the most common uh, anaesthetic by far is a uh, is a spinal uh, or epidural anaesthetic, which uh, I would. Say uh, at least in my practice, it is carried out for probably ninety six percent of patients, and this is really because it, it's the safest form of anaesthesia for for the majority of uh, of patients. Uh, so the benefits to are to it are that it's uh, uh, safer, uh, as it protects your heart uh, and lungs from uh, from having a general anaesthetic. It it, it it also allows you to recover uh, a bit quicker afterwards, and most of our hip replacement programs are, are, are now uh, enhanced recovery or fast track uh, hip replacement where we you know where we aim to get people uh, or patients walking you know within ideally within four to six hours of uh, of, uh, of their hip replacement so the same day as surgery typically in the afternoon uh, and uh, we, we, we can do this because we use you know, good uh, uh, spinal or uh, epidural anesthesia that, uh, that that wears off and it's designed to wear off quickly. And it is allowed. Uh, it's designed to get patients walking, you know, walking uh, and mobilizing as soon as uh, possible, which is you know, which is speed up and enhance your recovery uh, uh, in general. Good, thanks, Joe. Uh, one more question here from Adele. After a full hip replacement, can you expect to get back to full rotation of hip? Example: getting the hip up to 120 degree angle. I'm 60. Had full replacement after fall seven months ago. She's and she runs place. Swims as well, so uh, yeah. So yeah, again, it's it, this comes down to you know your range of movement. Your range of movement of your hip is a function of, of of two things really. One is is your is your flexibility, and the second is your is your muscle strength around your hip. And how much uh, how much uh, range of movement you have after your hip replacement is is dependent to some degree on how flexible your hip was beforehand, as we've uh, as I've mentioned. So if you've had good flexibility before your hip replacement and good muscle st uh, strength, and you're you're quite active as you as you seem to be, then I would expect a uh, you know a um, you know a good range of movement afterwards. Whether you get up to 120 degrees of hip flexion, that's 
you know, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's hard to guarantee, but you certainly would expect, a, um, you know, a, 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 a enough of a, a good enough range of movement to do, you know, most things such as uh, cycling and, uh, and swimming and, uh, you know, and, uh, and even playing tennis is possible again after about six months uh, after a hip replacement. Okay, that's good. And um, I'm just looking, there was a question from Rashi White. She did have a hip replacement in 2013 and she's had pain since then and she's been told it's being bursitis. She just wondered, will it improve? Because she does need the other hip done as well. So she's probably a bit nervous about that. Uh, yeah, so the uh, so, burst, so pain after a hip replacement is uh, uh, does happen sometimes. The satisfaction rate from the you know from the scientific literature after hip replacement is about somewhere between ninety to ninety five percent. So you know so most patients is probably the, probably the most successful operation of all time really in, in terms of uh, of satisfaction uh, after you know after surgery. But the corollary of that is that there's five percent of patients who who uh, you know who, who have problems or who have difficulties, uh, uh, and that's due to a variety of different reasons. One of those that uh, one of the more common uh, causes of pain after hip replacement is is uh, bursitis on the on the outside of your hip, and it, it often causes pain on the outside of your hip. This is generally treatable with, um, you know, generally with anti-inflammatories and physiotherapy to stretch the uh, the uh, the hip abductor muscles in that area in your hip, and sometimes a hip, uh, uh, you know, a steroid injection into the bursa is uh, uh, is required. So in general, most you know, for most patients. Uh, bursitis is generally uh, 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 treatable. There are some patients who, you know, who, who do have ongoing difficulties. Uh, I have to say, does, does it mean that it would happen if you had uh, uh, another hip replacement? I would say not necessarily, but again, it would be hard to guarantee that you know that it wouldn't happen. But uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, yes, that's the that's the um, you know that's the bursitis after hip replacement. Yeah. Uh, just an answer. Someone said, um, "If you delay a hip replacement, will your muscles waste?" Uh, yes, that's a good question. Again and again, it's you know, as I said, uh, 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 timing in a hip replacement is it's about getting the timing right, really. And uh, you know, uh, if you you know those general triggers that I've that I've mentioned about having constant pain, pain at night time, uh, and inability to walk a reasonable distance, they're generally the, the, you know the triggers that we use to. To proceed with the hip replacement, some patients may, you know, for for whatever reason, may have those symptoms, you know, for many years, and they may be avoiding surgery, or they may not be aware of surgery, or they may not be aware of the diagnosis, and often they end up with very stiff hips, and recovery afterwards is uh, is not as good as as uh, as if they had, you know, more flexible hips uh, before surgery. So it's certainly, you know, it's certainly about getting the timing right and not waiting, not waiting, uh, uh, not waiting uh, too long with severe symptoms. To try and optimize and get the best possible outcome after uh, after your uh, after your hip replacement, as I said, so again, it's you know going too early is also a is also a bad idea, and uh, and uh, and it's it, it, it's about getting the uh, timing right. But for most for most patients that I meet, m most patients uh, uh, generally have a good sense of uh, of the uh, of the right timing for their uh, you know for their hip replacement. Actually, Joe, Joe uh, lady there, Mary, she was just asking when you're talking about the, the markers, she used to said, is limited movement such as unable to put on your socks and shoes, would that be an indicator? Of, it would, yeah, yes, yeah. so it's daily living. Uh, so again, it all depends on, on, on what your needs are, really, So and, and your age and your activities. So uh, the, the, the classic difficulties that patients have, and again, that's due to stiffness, is that, is that they can't walk a reasonable distance. They have difficulty uh, putting on socks and shoes because their hip is stiff and they can't they can't bend it or flex it. They have difficulties getting in and out of uh, 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 cars again because they can't bend their hip uh, properly or, or using even using public transport. And when, when you start to hit you know that those triggers, then it's generally time to start to have it at least have a discussion with somebody about you know is it time for uh, you know is it time to uh, uh, to go ahead with the hip replacement? Yeah. Okay. Look, Joe, that's great. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. Um, and I think you've answered if there's still maybe some questions coming in, but we can always um, get back to people with those.